something so simple, something so innocent could, can end your life. Like, I don't care what you say, what you do, how you feel. As long as you can show me a good time. I don't need promises, honestly, no big deal. Hey guys, so today I am doing a story time. I feel like I don't do enough story times. I always do like fashion hauls and vlogs, but I don't give y'all the tea about stories that have happened in my life in the past. To give you a backstory, I grew up in a strict Christian home. I was very naive, but of course, now that I'm older, you know, I'm up on a T and stuff like that. So I'm not in those crazy situations as much, but it'd be like other things. So if it is your first time here, I'm Kylie Dreams. Make sure you hit that notification button, hit that subscribe button so you know when my videos are coming out. Like, subscribe, and comment, you guys. So let's get into this, okay? So before I start the story, I'm going to tell you the premise of my story time. So one time I was an intruder in someone's home. I sat on their couch. I drank some of their stuff. And I didn't know I was in the wrong house. So basically, when I was in college, I would get my hair done by, we're going to call him Dave. Dave, he, he was a, a drag queen. And I absolutely love Dave. Like, he taught me a lot of things about being a woman. And he taught me about makeup. Like, if I was doing it wrong, he would just kind of, like, show me a lot of things, you know. And he's taken me to places that I had never even been to. He had taken me to underground, like, parties for drag queens and how they would do shows. And it was just so fun and freeing. I absolutely loved it. I would go and get my hair done maybe about twice a month one to like maybe get a sew in and then to get a wash in between and stuff like that so we would have long talks and just be close and so one time he was telling me about a time that he wanted to have enhancements here and back here now in the community that i was from the the drag queens they would um, get pumped they call it getting pumped which means getting illegal substances put here and back here and when he was telling me about that i was like i don't know about that i think you should be patient take your time and actually spend money from a licensed surgeon doctor to get these enhancements like just take your time because you don't want your life is more important than to have something mess up in your body. So basically a month went by and he got pumped. The person that did the pumping was this person that would take our tickets when we would go to the drag shows. And he was telling me, yeah, she's going to be the one who did it. She, Her father was a doctor. And I was like, but she's not a doctor. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not judging or anything. I understand that he was just really excited to get it done and feel like a woman and i probably shouldn't be saying he but just so you guys can understand the story this is i'm not trying to offend him in any way or anybody but um so i was like i really really think that you should wait to get it done by a doctor you know not this woman who takes tickets at the door you know what i mean like so a little bit of time went past and i called the salon so that i could get my hair done and at that time, style seat, book seat, all that stuff wasn't around where you would do like the electronic thing. It was like you call in, they write it in a book and you get your hair done. But um, the owner of the salon was like, hey, David's not here. We haven't seen him in a while. We'll kind of keep you posted about where he's at. And at this right now, I'm like, dang, I hope he's okay, you know. And I actually had to go to a different stylist, but I still was concerned for him. I texted him. He wasn't answering. I really, really was nervous, especially him being a black um, trans in the community. I just wanted to make sure that he was good. A couple of days went past and he told me that he got really sick, that he had to go to the hospital. At this point, he's in a nursing home. And mind you, he was in his 20s. And I was like, I had never heard of anybody in their 20s going to a nursing home, but he needed to go to a nursing home to be taken care of. Coming to find out, he had liver failure. And I think it was because he got pumped. You put all those legal substances in your body and eventually your body's going to reject it. So he had to have recovery of himself because he was putting that stuff in his body. He had to be taken care of by a nurse daily to make sure that he does not die. 
and that he can walk and that he can breathe and all of those things. So I was like, my gosh, you know, I really kept him in my prayers. I checked up on him and made sure that he was good. So I don't know how much time went past. I'm going to say like a couple of months. He was like, okay, I'm ready to do hair again, but it's going to be at my house. I had never been to his house. Even though we were friends for years, he just never, I just never been to his house before, you know? And at this time, of course, you know, I was living in a college dorm and everything and I said, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do um, my hair at your house. And this is the first time I had ever went to someone's house to get my hair done, but he just couldn't afford to pay the booth rent at that time. He was trying to get himself back on his feet and work from home. He didn't really like people in his business, but he had to do what he had to do, you know? So I am getting ready to go to Dave's house. He texted me his address and he's like, hey, here's the address, but when you come, go ahead and walk inside. The door's unlocked and you can, you know, get you something to drink to eat. I'm busy right now, but I'm gonna be out in a, in a little bit to do your hair. And I'm like, okay, cool. Mind you, I had drank the stuff that you do in college. So I was a little bit clouded. You get what I'm saying? Y'all feel me? And so I wasn't there all the way, but I was like, okay, what, what house is this? So I finally found the house. The door was open and I walked in, grabbed me something to drink, sat on the couch, started changing the channel because I was pretty comfortable with him. And this guy comes out and was like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? Nothing. How you doing? He's like, nothing. What's good? So, you know, he sees me sitting on his couch. He's asking me, like, you know, what's your name and what you here for? And, I mean, he was asking me questions. I thought it was um, my hairstylist boyfriend. He's had different men before, so I don't get into the affairs of other people. You know, we are in college. Well, I was in college, so none of that made a big deal to me. And so, you know, we sit, we sitting there and he was like, so what, what really brings you by? I said, oh, I'm getting my hair done. I'm just waiting for Dave to come out. He's like, oh, okay. Okay. He said, well, um, you're at the wrong house. And I was like, what? He said, this is not Dave's house. And at that moment, I was mortified y'all. I was mortified. I'm in the wrong house having a conversation with a man that I do not know. At that moment, I apologize to that man because he could have shot me. And I think about all the countless times where someone could have accidentally went into someone's house and they died for that. And luckily I was looking cute that day because if I was a man that walked into his house or looked crazy that day, I easily could have lost my life. And I think that the man who was asking me questions because he's like, how did this beautiful woman land on my couch? <laughs> and then what is she doing? Is she crazy? Like, what's going on? Like, I could see he was looking at me strange, but I didn't really pay it much mind because I was watching TV. I was watching TV on his couch and drinking his juice and sitting on his couch. <laughs> I could see all the stuff. Now that I replay it back, I could see the uh questions going on in his head and like why am i in his house <laughs> i looked at that man and i was like sir i am so sorry i thought i was at so-and-so's house and he said he lives down there and i the only thing i could do is apologize and i told my hairstylist everything that he was going on. he was like girl you are crazy like I, I would never walk into nobody's house and i said what you told me that the door is unlocked he said i didn't say that i had the door open though he said it was unlocked, but the door wasn't open the man's house that i went to the door was open and like i told you that night before i had drank a little bit on campus and my mom went 100 percent there so i made it in my mind that the door was open and that really taught me a lesson like to pay attention to make sure that I'm in the right place and I actually was at the wrong building it was the right number of on the door but it was the wrong building so that's why when I'm going places I like to pay attention I like to even when I'm googling to go to a place I had never been I like to look at the directions on where I'm going because I don't want to end up at the wrong place because Something so simple, something so innocent can, can end your life. Like, it seemed like, oh yeah, I was just in the wrong house, you know, but to the wrong, in the wrong situation, if I was in a female's house, she could have put warranted a gun out on me. You know, this was in Virginia, anything could have happened. And I just felt like that was a crazy story, you know, like, think about if you're chilling, you had your door, like it's a summer, summer day or summer, summer 
afternoon and someone comes in there sitting on your couch what would you do what would you do you know and just luckily i was a female so yeah i wanted to share that story with you i know it wasn't a long one but i thought that you guys would find it entertaining make sure you like subscribe and comment hit that notification bell so you know when my videos are coming out and stay tuned for the next story bye bye I don't care.